Now in this series of tutorial, we are covering this keyword in Java. So guys, before I start talking something today or before I start coding something today, I have few questions which is running in my mind. And I'm damn sure that if you are a beginner, you have this question in your mind as well. So let's go ahead and have a look on this question that I'm talking about. So here we go for our question number one. Can you print this? And if you can, what it is going to return to you? Question number two. Can you use this as a part of return statement in a method? And question number three. Can you pass this inside the method argument? Or can you pass this inside the constructor argument? Now, if you're wondering what the heck is this, then this tutorial is right for you. Hi, my name is Abhilash and thanks for tuning to my channel, Selenium Express. So guys, before I give you the answer for the question that I have just asked you, let's listen to this statement. The this keyword in Java returns the current class instance. So when I say current class instance, that means the current class object. So this in Java returns the current class object. So we can say this is equal to the current class object. So now you're gonna ask me how? How can you say that? Can you prove that for me? Yes, that's what I'm going to do next. So let's go ahead and let's prove that the this keyword in Java returns the current class instance. And guys, trust me, if you can understand this, then you can answer all the three questions that I've just asked you. Alright? So let's go ahead and let's see how it works. So guys, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to create a class called class A and I'm going to create an object for my class A. Like this, A, A1 equal to new A. So here, A1 is what? A1 is my reference variable, isn't it? So right now, if I'm trying to print my A1, then what it is going to return to me? It is going to return to me the memory address where the object is created. So somewhere in the memory, the object is created and if I try to print A1 then it is going to return to me that memory address where my object is created isn't it so right now if I'm going to print this keyword also so as the definition says this keyword returns the current class instance or the current class object so if I try to print this keyword, then this keyword should also return the same memory address that I'm getting through A1 reference. Confused? So let's go ahead and let's write this program to prove that this returns the current class instance. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So guys, now let's create a class first. Okay? So I'll say class A and I'll wrap this off here all right right now i'm going to create a main method here string argument and inside my main method i'm going to create the a class object so how to do that a a1 equal to new a Alright, and now I'm going to print this a1 variable, right? This a1 is a reference variable, right? Which contains the memory object of a class object, isn't it? So let's go ahead and print it. So I'll say system.out.println and I'll say a1. So if I do that, what is going to be my output? So in my output, I'll get something like this. I'll get first the class name a at the rate is my concatenation operator. Then I'll get a hexadecimal value like this. 1, 2, 1, db, 1, 2, 3, 4. Something like this I'll get. You may get something a different value. I'm just giving you an example. So if I break it down, what is this? A is your class name. Etherate is a concatenation operator, which is concatenating this one and this one. And this one is a hexadecimal value of your hash score. 
So your hash code is represented in hexadecimal format, isn't it? So this is what the memory address. So wherever in the memory the object is created, this is the address to that particular object, isn't it? So as per my definition, if I'm going to print this over here, the dish should give me this particular address as well. Because this keyword in Java refers to the current class object, isn't it? So can I print over here this as system.out.println? Can I print this here? And if you're going to print here this, you are going to get compilation error. Now you're going to ask me why. Now only you said if I'm going to print this, then you are going to get the same memory address. But guys, just look at this. This is static. This main method is static. And you cannot use this inside a static method. So you never can use this inside a static method, isn't it? So to achieve that, we need to create a non-static method. So let's create a non-static method over here. Let's say this method void m1. And inside this non-static method, I'm going to print my this keyword over here. So I'll say system.out.println and I'll print this here. And how to call this particular method? If I need to call this particular method, I need to create an object. So I, need, I have already created an object of my A class, isn't it? So using this object reference, I can call this particular method. My method name is m1. And if you are going to call this, you are going to get the same memory address right here. So you are going to get something like this, a at the rate 12db1234. So whatever the memory address for the object that you are getting through, so by printing the a1 reference variable, you'll get the same memory address by printing the this keyword. So this proved that this is equal to the current class object. So what we understood from this, if somewhere we need to return our current class object or we need to pass somewhere our current class object, we can use this as the alternative. So now let's go ahead and let's see the answers for the question that I've just asked you right before the beginning of the tutorial. So let's go for that. So guys, now let's go ahead and discuss the second question that I've asked you. Can we use this as a part of return statement in a method? Yes, of course we can use that. If I have a requirement that I should have a method in my class and the method should return the current class instance or the method should return the current class object, then I can use this as the alternative. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to take the same example right here. Just I want to remove this particular SOP statement and I remove this particular SOP statement and I'll remove the output as well, all right? So in my M1, instead of void, I'm going to take here A. So my M1 method has a return type, which is A. So my M1 method returning a current class object. So how, how my M1 method can return, a, return an object? So to do that, I can create an object of A class like this, A A1 equal to new A. And I can say return a1 isn't it now this a1 is my a class object so when i'm calling a1.m1 it is calling this method and it is going to print the a1 reference variable like this a at the rate 12 db1234 similarly instead of this i can i can remove this particular line and I can just say return this. And if I say return this, then you know this represents the current class instance. So here my M1 method will return the current class instance. So here whenever I'm calling M1 method, it is also going to return this particular memory address as the output, like A at the, like a at the rate 1, 2, db1234 you are going to get a memory address, all right? All right, so be sure that you can use this as a part of return statement in a method, all right? So the next question was, can you use this inside constructor argument or inside method argument? Yes, of course you can use that. So when your method is expecting 
a current class object to pass inside it or, a, or your constructor is expecting a current class instance to pass inside it at that time you can pass this inside your constructor argument or inside your method argument now let's do it practically so instead of writing it in a whiteboard let's dive into Eclipse and let's score it but guys here I want to say you that if you're a beginner prefer notepad plus plus or prefer edit plus because you need more coding effort to do that okay but I'm going to use your Eclipse for my convenience all right so let's dive into Eclipse and let's get our hands study by doing some coding hey guys and welcome back so as I said here we're gonna see how we can pass this as a constructor argument and as a method argument so first here we're gonna see how we can pass this as a method argument so let's go ahead and try to create some method here for example I'm going to create a method called void m1 all right and I'll wrap this off right here so my m1 method is asking for a a class object so I'll say a a1 all right so here I'm just going to have a print statement here saying uh, hey I am m1 method right so let's have a sys out here and let's have a control space and over here, I'm going to say, uh, hi, I am M1 method, right? So let's have another method for fun. <laughs> I'll say void uh, M, and I don't want to pass anything inside the argument, and I just have a sys out over here as well, saying, hi, I am M method. All right. So to call this particular method, what I want, I need to create object, right? So I'm going to create a main method right here, saying main, and I'll just have a control space. All right. So right here, uh, in my main method, I'm going to create the A class object. So A A equal to new A. And using my A class object, I'm going to call first the M method, right? Now I'm going to call the m1 method and if I'm going to call the m1 method I need to pass a a class object isn't it so to pass a class object what I can do a is a class object isn't it a is the reference variable of a so I just can pass a right because my m1 method is asking for a a class object to pass inside its argument and then only it is going to be executed so I'm going to pass a over here which is a a class object to execute this particular method so let's go ahead and run it so I'll click here run okay uh, proceed and here we go so we get our expected output the first one is hi I am M method and the second one is hi I am M1 method but I said you before if you have a requirement uh, to pass the the current class object you can use this as a alternative so over here the m1 method is asking for a, a class object uh, so a is a current class so as a alternative inside the method argument I can use this so if I write this over here this is also valid but guys this is invalid because right over here you are using this inside a static method because your main method is static and you cannot use this inside a static method so you cannot use this inside the main method so to do that uh, you need to call this particular method inside a, another method and that method you can call inside the main method so how to do that so uh, so I'm going to remove this and over here I'm going to create another method so void I'll say void m2 and over here let's call this particular method so how to call this particular method uh, so uh, I can call a non-static method into a non-static method directly or by creating an object so over here I'm going to call this particular method directly over here because this is non-static this is non-static without creating an object also you're you can call this particular method so I'm going to, so I'm going to say m1 and so over here m1 is asking for a, a class object so I'll say this so now let's call m2 method so I'll say a dot m2 so first I'm calling m method so m method is going to return me hi I am 
m method then i am calling m2 method so m2 method here is calling another method called m1 so m1 method has a print statement saying hi i am m1 method so i'm going to get two output over here hi i am m method and hi i am m1 method so let's go ahead and run it again i'll press ok here and i'll say proceed and here we go hi i am m method and hi i am m1 method just one thing to remember guys how you can pass this as a method argument guys as the same thing you can use this as a constructor argument